Hello, this is a uh, demonstration and explanation of a multiplier circuit. This is a, a looping multiplier circuit uh, using control logic. Uh, this can be done in various ways. This is probably not the normal way to do it. This is just for demonstration purposes that this kind of thing can be done. All right, so the uh, the components of this multiplier circuit, and it's a five bit multiplier, are a clock. This clock is right here. Uh, uh, I'm just calling it a ROM. It, it is kind of a ROM, but just to read some values into the instruction counter is needed. A three bit instruction counter, a control circuit, uh, this series of boards is various steps for multiplication. Uh, there's three registers. There's an A register here to the left. In the center is the B register. To the right is a shift register. And behind that is the actual ALU, which adds the A and B registers. It has uh, uh, also... Um, the ability to write its current value here onto these D latch boards. Now well, let me just walk through multiplying uh, three times three. So in the A register is three, as seen in these uh, display uh, modules here, or whatever they're called, and B also has three. The shift register will be populated when it runs. When the multiplier circuit is disabled, right now this enable switch is off, this board here just um, recognizes that it's disabled because this line here, this enable line is off. So it, all these, uh, all these here, these uh, inverters, are basically going into AND gates to turn on this board, which is the reset circuit. And all the reset circuit does is it writes what's in this multiplier reset ROM, which is 15 here. And the reason I do that is so when I initially increment the instruction counter, it's gonna go to zero. It's kind of my weird little hacky way around that some problems I had. Okay. So starting with the clock here, the clock will uh, pulse every 16 ticks. I don't know if it can get faster or not. I haven't done a lot of, uh, you know, testing to see uh, how fast it can run. And it sends out a clock signal and a decode clock which I'm calling read here on this uh, board. It's uh, not really read. I, it's kind of uh, just because of the evolution of how I, I designed this, I called it read. Okay, so the IC uh, instruction clock gets sent out and five ticks later, it sends out this uh, signal. We'll just call it the decode signal. And it's gonna tell these boards whichever board is currently uh, being selected to do a step, to perform a step. And to perform a step, it's just gonna enable a series of these control lines. For example, writing to the ALU or reading from the B register. Okay. The reason for the delay is so that the instruction counter, which is a ripple style uh, counter, takes a little while to propagate. So that, that's where the five tick delay is used for. So let's just uh, run through a few steps here. I have, uh, I'll, I'll enable the circuit And I will set the simulation rate slow and try to talk about it while it's running. If you haven't uh, seen the uh, algorithm for uh, multiplying two binary numbers by shifting and adding, this, 
this uh, this circuit, that's what that does. That's why it does it in a loop. Essentially, it's uh, shifting the A register and repeatedly adding the A register based on what is in the B register. So the B register is actually copied to the shift register and I look at the, the least significant bit, the lowest bit here, and based on this, whether it's zero or one, I repeatedly add the A register. And then I keep shifting what's in the shift register so I keep getting a new low bit. Uh, when that bit is uh, one, I am adding the A register. When that bit is zero, I'm not adding the A register. Uh, there's examples online of, of uh, shifting and adding uh, for multiplication with binary numbers. So I'm gonna enable the clock. The clock uh, instruction lines have all gone to zero and this board has now been enabled. This board here uh, writes control lines to send B to the shift register. So if we go to the shift register, we should see the value three here on these D latches here and here. And that's what we want. The next step is writing zero to the B register. That's because the B register is basically gonna be a running total of our results. The results will be stored in B in other words. And the next step here, I'm running the clock slow just so I can talk about this. I'm gonna do an ALU write. So when this uh, board goes on, I'm gonna do an ALU write. So I'm gonna basically write whatever is, uh, whatever the ALU is summing between the A and B registers to its set of D latches. That's so that value is saved in case, you know, uh, other, you know, A and B registers are changing in the meantime, but I want to save off that value. That's why I have uh, a save feature on the ALU. All right, the next thing I, uh, we're going to be doing is writing the ALU to B. This is an unused board. It's on, but it's not doing anything. This is the actual board here. I'm highlighting this board it is uh, copying what's in the ALU save a D latches to the B register. So basically I have now multiplied uh, the first step is adding the A register to zero and the A register is at three so the result is three. So now the next step through this uh, circuit is going to be to shift this A register one bit to the left and then add it again. Uh, to this B register effectively. It's just going to keep doing that. So it's shifted the A register. Now, when it gets to this last board, it's actually going to execute sort of a jump instruction. And it's going to do that by writing a new value to the instruction counter. It's going to do that by turning on this multiplier jump ROM so that it sends its value to, down the data lines. And then it's going to tell the uh, instruction counter to write what's on the data lines to itself. So it just got an updated value of two and that right line went on. And now uh, the instruction counter is two. These are, these RD lines are uh, my way of just always being able to read from the instruction counter, not on a data bus. I call it like a backend uh, bus where it's just coming from this to my instruction uh, unit here, my instruction decoder. So it's now managed to get the correct answer here by repeatedly shifting and adding. So that's uh, that's nine there, four plus, I mean, eight plus uh, one is nine. And that's, that's how that works. Uh, again, there's there's other ways to do this. I mean, you could simply build a very large circuit that shifts and adds kind of in sequence without all this uh, control logic. 
but it, it was kind of uh, something I wanted to try to do. I, I guess I thought about maybe implementing multiply in my CPU over here with this, but uh, more work would need to be done. I would need more control over the clock than my CPU currently provides because this is a long process. I mean, this is taking many, many, many ticks. I, I don't really know how many it's... Uh, well, the clock is running at 16 ticks, plus there's a delay, but you got to figure uh, if the clock would, if I was able to get down to 15, say, there's, you know, three setup steps, so that's 15 times three, that's 45 ticks there, then it's going to issue one, two, three, four, five commands in sequence, and they have to be run uh, five times. So that's 45 plus 25. That's like 70 ticks. And it's probably more than that um, because of the delays and such. Well, hopefully that was interesting to some people. Um, I think I'm going to call this video done. If you have uh, you know specific questions about this sort of thing, you can ask in the uh, comment section. Thank you.